So this is a mini, so obviously there isn't room for a wrapper and binder. So the wrapper is an Ecuadorian natural. Um, so it's got that plain Jane brown natural leaf on the outside there. Um, and then the filler is actually a three country mix. Um, so they've got some Dominican Republic tobacco, some tobacco from Colombia, as well as Indonesia. Um, so. Everything I know and I've learned about tobacco tells me that that is kind of what gives it um, each to, kind of tobacco, each tobacco from different country tends to have a little bit of a different flavor. Um, so that might be something that kind of gives this the slight complexity that it has. Um, the reason I wanted to do a part two to this is because the other day, yesterday actually, I was enjoying one of these on my way to work. Um, and I noticed a few different other flavors in it that I didn't notice the first time around. And I have a feeling that might be because the first one that I did, um, I was drinking iced coffee. Um, and I think the strongness of the coffee that I was drinking kind of muddled the flavors on my palate. So, um, I did kind of want to give this another run through. Um, so without further ado, we shall light it up and get going here. Today I'm not going to use a lighter because um, I think that might have also been the difference yesterday. Yesterday I used matches, um, so we're going to go ahead and use matches again. I don't typically use matches, um, but when it's a small miniature like this, they work just fine. Just like that, we're off to the races. So when I looked online to see what the uh, wrapper and filler was for this, um, the description that I found on a lot of the sites was that it's a smooth and creamy earthiness um, with a natural sweetness. So right away when I read that, I thought to myself, yep, that's pretty much spot on. Even from the first review, the first time I smoked them, that's pretty much spot on. The only thing it doesn't mention in the description is the pepper um, profile that I get from it at least. Um, so like I, I said before, your base tobacco in this, um, it's got that natural sweetness to it of course, and it is an earthier tobacco. Um, it doesn't have, you know, like a pronounced cedar note or a pronounced leather note. It's kind of all of those components mixed together. And then as far as the pepper um, profile goes, you don't notice it too much in just the regular um, exhale, if you will. Um, but when you do the retrohale, that's when the pepper note really picks up. And it's not a long lasting pepper either. It's just kind of like a short punch in the nasal passages. So we're gonna get rolling. Um, I am on my way to work. So time to make those donuts again. Good thing about today, family, is that it is Wednesday, and you know what that means, right? Hump day! Halfway through the week, baby. Got some OT in last week, so kind of looking forward to this paycheck Friday. Give me a little extra that I can put back in the savings, hopefully. So the earthy tobacco, um, I said that it's kind of a, it's a conglomerate, if you will, of a lot of different subtle notes. Um, so typical of any cigar, um, you've got the cedar note, which typically just comes from the way they're packaged, stored. Now these are packaged in a tin, um, a sealed tin at that. So that leads me to believe that either the tobacco itself before it gets rolled and put into the cigar more or less is probably kept in some sort of humidification area obviously 
to keep it seasoned and I'm sure they, they use some sort of cedar in that so if nothing else they might be stored in a cedar box before they're placed in the tins who knows um, but cedar is a pretty profound note in any cigar that at least any cigar that I've had um, all of them tend to have a, that cedar woodiness to it um, the leather isn't as strong in this one um, but it is there and the way I can kind of tell that is that when you get kind of that cedar note on the flavor um, it has kind of that and it might just be the combination of the cedar and the natural sweetness um, that kind of gives you that leathery kind of taste like I said before it's not a very heavy smoke it's um, a little more lofty a little more light and uh, airy smoke but you do get plenty of smoke on the draw and the one thing I love about these minis is that a they don't take long to smoke so they're perfect for the ride in given that I only live like five minutes away from work and B they burn really even nice you never have to relight I mean look at this you don't get much better than that camera was a little out of focus but you get the idea Like I had said before, the, the, the pepper profile in this is not your typical black pepper. Um, this is more of what I would say a spicy red pepper. It's like a cayenne pepper almost is what I would compare it to. Um, the only thing it doesn't have from the cayenne pepper is that cayenne pepper is usually uh, like an oily. This is more of a dry cayenne pepper. It kind of, like I said, it's not a very long finish on the pepper. Um, it just kind of punches you in the nasal passages and then flies away. So, um, For those of you who might not enjoy as much pepper, um, but you're looking to spice up your uh, cigar smoking, this might be something for you to try. Um, I haven't found too many larger size cigars that have that dry pepper to it. Most of them are like an oily pepper. Um, so they tend to hang on there in the finish. But... And um, these Inspirados, it is a line that is offered in a bigger size. I believe they have a Toro and a Robusto size um, in all three blends. Two of the blends for sure I know, the whites um, and then these the oranges I know for sure have the bigger sizes. I believe that there is a black, or no, well I know there's a red, um, but I saw somewhere in my digging around online that there was a black as well. So that might mean that there's four different blends. Um, so I'm definitely eager to try the other two and see what the difference might be. So that naturally sweet earthy tobacco is your prominent flavor. Um, that spiciness really just comes through on the retro hail. So if you're not into all that spicy pepper, um, avoid the retro hail, obviously, if you're going to try one of these. You do kind of have to watch out. Um, I don't mind it too much, um, but since there isn't really a cap on these, or uh, when they're rolled, they don't put a cap or anything on them, obviously, because they're so small. Um, when you get down, you know, to the last bit here, it does tend to get a little loose down by the fingers. Um, so just be wary of that if you're not into getting tobacco in your mouth might not be the best choice for you and then obviously watch out for the uh, burning of the digits <laughs> depending on how far you go down I mean you can smoke these all the way down it's all tobacco there's nothing there that's gonna you know nothing there that you can't smoke but oh there it is so I just caught a, a glimpse of um, like a, I'm going to call it, gosh, now I can't think of the word, floral. It's got like a floral note, and what I would compare it to is kind of the smell that you get when you're smelling daisies. So think about either white or yellow, whatever color, daisies. So daisy pumps, when they're fresh, just cut them off, 
Um, I actually used to work at a florist, so I've got a pretty profound uh, sense memory, I guess is what you could call it, of different flowers. But that's what I would compare it to. On the retro hail, um, kind of right behind that pepper, when the pepper blast comes through, you get like a slight floral note that is very comparable in my senses to fresh cut daisies. Kind of interesting. And that's the flavor that I kind of caught yesterday um, when I didn't have the coffee. I don't have the coffee today either, unfortunately. But um, I kind of wanted to get that back for you guys so I could kind of explain it for you. So as you get down to the end, we've got, I don't know, a little over a half an inch here is all we've got left. Um, and the pepper is gone. So the pepper dies out in the end there. And you're kind of left with just the earthy tobacco. The sweetness kind of fades away. Um, so it's really just like a natural tobacco flavor. And um, kind of those deeper earthy tones coming through. And on that note, we're going to put it out. Um, so these are very, very good. Um, I would suggest if you're looking for something a little more aromatic and something with a little bit more flavor profile to it, to go with the white. Um, now, obviously, I haven't tried the other two blends yet. Um, so we'll have to see, wait and see on that one. Um, but the Inspirado White is actually really good. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, as soon as you open the tin, it's very aromatic. Um, you get a strong sense of vanilla in that one. Um, so those are really good and a different pepper profile as well. So the, the Inspirato Whites had more of a spicy black pepper um, and it was a little bit of a longer finish on the pepper note as well. So if you, if you like the pepper and you kind of want that in there throughout the entire experience, um, you might want to go with the Inspirato Whites. I liked those better than the orange ones, um, but the oranges aren't too bad either. So, And again, uh, I actually found these and the whites and the other blends at um, Wild Bill's Tobacco. Now, I'm in Michigan. I don't know how far Wild Bill's reach goes. Um, but where I had originally gotten the tin of whites, they were about $17 for a little um, tin of 20 of them. These were $11.99, um, and they had the whites for $11.99 as well. So a little bit cheaper, um, probably just because Wild Bill's is kind of one of those we-got-it-all type of stores, so... That might be why. Maybe they got a discount. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Um, I got to get in here, punch in, and uh, start making some donuts. So, yeah, you guys have a good one.